Greetings, everyone. I told you that I would uh, give you a brief example how to make a or distress your clothing rather, uh, so that you could you know have that nice screen look, filth and ready for, you know for any potential zombie outing that you have coming forth. Um, as I stated briefly in the thread, you can go up here to your local Salvation Army and pick up something. You know you can get something like this. You know with a, a shirt that even goes with it, short sleeve, um, for like three fifty. Um, now, I'll admit, picking an outfit like this that's, you know, covers a lot of ground on the human body, uh, your makeup artist will love you because that means they don't have to, you know, obviously paint that much. But during the summer, I know that that's not exactly ideal. Um, some people can deal with it. Others can't. Uh, if this is your chosen route, uh, then I would say definitely hydrate. Otherwise, as I stated, like 350 at your local Salvation Army or whatever clothes you like. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not going to distress this whole suit for you on this video. I'm just going to give you a brief example. Um, and I will probably do a little bit, actually a little bit on both the shirt and the jacket so that you can see how the two different fabrics work. Now, I will say this. Try to stay away from polyester. Um, this is a polyester blend, which is not quite as bad, but uh, straight polyester does not distress well. All right. So, just to cover some quick tools that you might need, uh, a decent pair of shears. Um, now, this is only to you know, give you quick snips here and there where you need them, and obviously to get through some of the tougher spots. Sometimes that might be a little pale that you want to you know, get a little jagged cut in, you know, something like that, or, or definitely around the cuffs. That's always a place that you want to uh, distress heavily because that's where obviously the most tearing and, and ripping would be uh, that, because they're using their hands a lot. Um, now, as you distress something, I do want to say that, distress it smart, okay? Don't, you, you, you know, you don't have to do crazy things everywhere, all right? The, the main thing is, is where, you know, if you put on an outfit, you're a zombie, and you wore it for a month or so, where would the most distress be? Typically at the elbows, the knees, uh, you know, around the cuffs, that's where most of your, you know, fresh blood would be, because they're eating, Blech. so all your fresh blood would need, you obviously need to be around the collar and down the front and around the cuffs, that kind of thing. Well, we'll discuss, you know, discuss more into that in a minute, but uh, definitely a nice pair of shears so that you can, you know, cut through some of the tougher spots like collars, uh, you know, you, want, you, you shouldn't need this, but sparingly. <laughs> okay, now, as I said, I choose a short sleeve shirt because, after all, if you're talking about wearing a jacket over it, there's no reason to not be as comfortable as you can. White, uh, it just shows the gore and the filth better. All right. I don't, very rarely do I need scissors for this, but I do have uh, a tool that not many people would have. It's called a mending block. You can pick it up at your local Home Depot. Uh, typically, it's used to put roof trusses together. But they're real cheap, like 25 cents or so. And then once you, you know, have one, a couple of these, then you simply screw them into a wood block so that you, you know, you got something nice firm you can hang on to to grab and distress the clothes with it. Uh, now, here, let's uh, can just do the front. Now you can see it don't take much with that mending block to get some nice wear and tear there. I don't know if you can see it really against the white there. All right, but I'll come back to that in just a moment. Let's do some on the jacket here a little bit. And don't always go necessarily in one direction either. You know, try to change it up some. Go, go a little up, a little down, side to side. Because uh, your wear and tear would obviously not be uniform. Okay. The next tool that you would want to incorporate into this is a decent wire brush. Uh, now, this is just so that after you've done what you can with the mending block, that you can really distress it without having to obviously run it through the wash five million times. Uh, now, just to 
quick example going back to the white shirt we're going to rough up the areas where I've already used the mending block and be sure to go again in all directions with your wire brush because that's what will help fray the fabric out much better See, you can see that a lot better. Uh, I'll give you close-ups on this up in the in the sun in a moment, but you can see how the pockets distress nice. Okay. And as you can see, that distressed nicely as well. Now we'll obviously take, and like I said, I'll, I'll give you a much more close up here in just a moment. But now that that is done, obviously that goes without saying that you want to do this to the you know to the key spots on an outfit not necessarily the whole thing but you know the main the main spots just to give it some wear and tear okay now, once you've done that, and, and the majority, well, over the majority of the suit, uh, the main thing is, like I said, focus on the key spots. Around the ankles, around the cuffs, uh, elbows are good spots, knees. Uh, now, but the thing is that you gotta keep in mind, as you rip this open your, as you rip open your clothing there, obviously you're gonna expose things underneath. So you need to be prepared to either, A, attach something to the clothing to cover up that hole, but obviously a gory hole, uh, you know, something gory underneath it to kind of go with along with your, your outfit. Otherwise, uh, well, either don't distress it that badly, be prepared to attach something to the suit to kind of patch it, you know, for gore, or get ready to put makeup on yourself, or be prepared to build an undersuit. Now, I will show you what an undersuit is here in a moment. Uh, I'll admit I didn't bring it out here for this presentation. That was a, kind of a dumb move. But uh, otherwise, once you've got it distressed over the entire outfit, it will begin to look, you know, now I, this has already got all the other filth and stuff on it. So this, this doesn't quite, you're not really gonna be able to see all the distressing. You see, I, I tore this one up rather brutally, okay? But see, I'm also prepared to cover it up underneath, all right? Now, to explain once you get it ripped up, all the clothing, and you get it the way you really want it, um, then that's when you can start adding your gore and stuff to the outside of it. Now, to explain how I do that, uh, there's, personally, for dirt, I like to use a, a mixture of, well, it's, to be honest, it's instant coffee, water, and a little glycerin. Uh, I know some folks uh, don't exactly have nowhere to get glycerin on hand you can pick it up at CVS it's not that cheap but you can get it there and after all it only takes like a teaspoon for a bottle this size uh, just to, it just helps thicken it up and uh, obviously where you can get it where you really need it now as I said this is what I use for fake dirt I put a little bit on, on the majority of the costume uh, where do I focus the most obviously around the maybe on the knees uh, definitely around the, the pants legs uh, so Needless to say, I use dirt, and, and I, I'm t showing you these things in, a, in an order, okay, because this is the order in which you want to apply them to the clothes. Where this is water-based, go with this first. Get your dirt in place. After that, I know this is going to seem so simple. After that, uh, personally, I like clear school glue, okay? 
you can add whatever food colorant you want to it. When you apply it, it, it goes on. It, it kind of will stay semi beaded up on the top of the fabric, but it will soak in a little. It gives you that, uh, it's just a nice effect. Okay, that, that's all I can really say. It's a nice effect. This happens to be mixed with red, and this is mixed uh, kind of a green black. But, you know, you, you want various levels of filth on your suit. But, uh, but yeah, clear school glue, food colorants, you'd be surprised what you can do with this stuff. Now, I will say this, uh, and I, and I, and I want to make this perfectly clear. This is only good on clothing or props. It's not toxic. You can put it on the skin, but it is not designed to go on the skin. So if you put it on there, you know, don't be upset when it starts peeling off and looking like crap. <laughs> props and clothing only. Otherwise, for my serious filth, gore, and, and blood of many of different kinds, uh, I like to use a clear silicon. Okay? Now, a clear silicon like this, I'm not going to tell you it's cheap because it's not. Uh, in most cases, you, it's in the upwards of about $5 a tube. So, obviously, you want to kind of go sparingly with this. And uh, now, this Red Devil brand, I can pick it up locally where I live here for like $3 a tube. It's kind of low grade. But for what we're using it for, I'm not trying to caulk a bathroom. It's perfect, okay? Otherwise, you definitely want to, I mean, you can you can pigment this stuff with acrylic paint if that's what you've got. Uh, but I personally prefer to use Silpig. Silpig is a particular pigment. It's designed to color silicons. So, I mean, in this particular kit, this is a sample kit. In this particular kit, they already have a blood color, flesh, and all your various colors of the rainbow, as you can see. Now, just to give you an idea, if I'm doing some silicone impregnated prosthetics, a toothpick is all that's needed in this stuff to, to color an entire batch of silicone. So, if I'm doing a little bit of gore on the suit right here, I might put enough of that silicone in a little cup, about like so, and maybe one dip of a popsicle stick in there and mix it up, and yeah, now you gotta mix it up thoroughly, but it will pigment any silicon, be it tin cure silicon or up to platinum cure silicon like you would use for prosthetics masks and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that's what I personally like to use. I, I, that's a whole nother subject as to where do you get some of the stuff that I use. Uh, if you desire to know, ask, I'll tell you. Um, or I can tell you where to find it in your local town uh, in many cases, but nonetheless, you can use acrylic paints if you don't have this. Not only that, but this little sample kit runs like almost 30 bucks. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway. Now, <clears throat> to give you an idea. Uh, and now that I've already shown you this shirt once. Now, this particular, it, it is a conglomeration of the coffee dirt, a little bit of the school glue blood, and I mixed up two different batches of the silicon and sill pig. Now, I've got a darker brown in here, which kind of simulates the, the rot and the filth of the actual zombie. And then I've got the red, uh, which obviously simulates more of the, the fresh he's been eating. All right. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm sure if you haven't seen it already, there's a movement test for this particular costume on my channel. So you can uh, also go and check that out. Now, I did want to kind of briefly show you This is the pants. And you can see how they've been distressed around the knees and the, the legs and whatnot. Uh, take a special note to the dirt that I was talking about around the breeches legs. See, that gives you a definite look that he's been trudging through God knows what for a minute now. And of course, the jacket. Okay, notice how all the fresh blood is strictly around the lapel uh, where he would be eating um, and around the cuffs because that's where, you know, he's reaching. Yeah. All right, otherwise, notice the rest of it's all brown and dark bloods. It's all been distressed, all on the back. Okay, now I will sell the, I do sell these suits. Uh, however, I do need such information as your sizes and that kind of thing before I get started because 
obviously uh, we want it to fit you. Now, as far as covering up the holes underneath, um, there's many ways you can do that. Uh, as I said, makeup is is a quick one, but you're having to, you're expecting your makeup artist to do that for you. Uh, it's not exactly uh, always the best plan, to, given how much time might be necessary sometimes. But I will say that. Uh, you know, if you can cover as much ground as you can, it'll make it easier. But as far as the openings in your suit, obviously make up. If you can't do that, then try to build a patch. Now, to build a patch, that's almost a whole other video in and of itself. Uh, I use a lot of different materials. Uh, a lot of cloth works great. Uh, obviously, putting latex on that cloth so that it doesn't look so much like cloth. But uh, make sure that you, you use that. Don't attach it to the clothes with latex. Attach it to the clothes with some other type of a clothing adhesive because then that way it won't. Because, see, latex will bleed through the cloth, and you'll see it, and it'll look all stiff and stupid. But uh, if you have any further questions like that, I would say just direct them to me either on Facebook or here. I'll try to answer those directly for you. Um, otherwise, give me just one moment, and I know that this is going to seem kind of silly. Uh, Okay, this is what I did to uh, obviously fill the gaps in my suit. Now, I know not everybody is prepared to go this far. Okay, but it's just a, a, uh, a unitard that, believe it or not, is big enough to fit me. It's for big girls. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, as you can see, I haven't painted the whole thing. I've only mainly painted it where I know it, it, it needs to be painted, where it's going to be seen through the costume. Uh, as far as down on the knees, like let, let's, let's cover this particular wound specifically. Um, I used a little L200 foam for the actual kneecap and a little bit of bone that you see there. Otherwise, it's all latex and some uh, like cotton batting and some other stuff I put in there, and then of course painted it, and then more of the filth, silicone filth uh, that I was telling you how to mix up. Put a little bit of that in there, and that gives it a nice wet look too. Uh, now, as far as the chest piece, the chest piece is indeed a sculpted item. It's something that I sculpted, uh, and well, it has to be cast off in a mold that I have. Now, I can make you one of these. It'll be, you know, if you want me to paint it up, I can do that for you, too. It'll raise the price. But uh, I can get you a raw one. In other words, where I pay pour latex straight in the mold, pull it out, stuff it in a box, and send it to you. And you do it yourself. I can do that for, for like, 50 bucks, including shipping. Okay? That includes your shipping. Uh, otherwise, as far as adding the gore to this chest piece, such as all this crazy-looking meat, and stuff again that's cotton batting with a little latex and uh you know that's, that's what all the ripped flesh pieces are too but uh that's that's how i built my undersuit now this is kind of a version 1.5 uh i've got other ideas in the works uh how to how to build a better suit of course that always how to build a better master huh? anyway this uh, this is some intestines attached to it uh now the intestines uh I don't mind saying that's that's nothing but a, a leg out of some pantyhose with some uh, polyfill in it, some latex, and uh, attach it. You know, paint it, put the you know appropriate filth and gore on it, and uh, just that easy. Okay. Now, if, yeah, those of you who are watching this video, uh, you know, as a zombie soul survivor volunteer, and you're trying to build your own. Help us make up artists out, uh, you know, ahead of time by creating, you know, at least the neck down look other than makeup. That would be most appreciated. Again, I don't expect you to go this far, uh, but any distance that you will go for us is much appreciated. Again, if you have any further questions or you wish to inquire about a chess piece, uh, a latex chess piece, get with me. We'll get this knocked out. Now, I will say this. As far as making you a zombie costume, my schedule is eat up right now. Uh, I've got several commissions on me that have got to be done by Dragon Con, like four of them. Uh, so needless to say, I'm kind of eat up from the floor up. And that's why I'm asking you volunteers to, to help me.
by beginning now to create your own neck down look. The rest of us makeup artists there at Soul Survivor, we'll take care of your hands. We'll take care of your face. If you're wearing shorts and a tank top, we'll take care of that too, but you can only expect some makeup. We're not going to do a lot of gore. We can't. We don't have time for that. Either way, I hope this has helped those that are interested out. And uh, again, any questions, contact me. All the best. Utre Studios, keep an eye on us.